So we're going to go into the similarities and difference between gold, silver, God's money, and people's money, which is crypto. This is why I converted over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's getting harder and the dollar's getting softer. I talked about there was God's money, which is gold and silver, and then people's money, which is Bitcoin or cyber cryptocurrencies. And I really think it's important, especially for old guys like me, to understand the crypto world because that's the world that's coming into view right now. And us real estate and gold guys are kind of being phased out. And the old guys have got their heads up their butts. You know, like <clears throat> Buffett is anti-gold and anti-crypto. I think, like, give me a break. You know, I mean, how can you be anti-something? You know, you got to know the pros and cons of everything. And, you know, he doesn't have to worry. He makes a lot of money. And then you have guys like Jim Records, a friend of mine, and he says crypto is dead. And so the reason I just love YouTube is I can crank along there, I can search, I'm looking for the other point of view. So we're gonna go into the similarities and difference between gold, silver, God's money, and people's money, which is crypto. Well, so I think that what you've got to start with is uh, whenever you look at financial markets, um, especially a kind of a macroeconomic standpoint, uh, there's problems and solutions, right? And, and actually what ends up happening is uh, precious metal uh, investors and cryptocurrency investors, they actually agree on most of the problems, right? So it, there, there's no secret that, hey, look, if you print a lot of money, the currency gets devalued, right? There's no secret that uh, there's high level of uh, corporate debt and, and the federal balance sheet's out of control and all of those things. Uh, for the most part, there's agreement. So I won't spend a ton of time on that. The question then is, what do you do, right? And, and I think that uh, where there's agreement on the solutions is this idea of sound money principles, right? right. And, and so whether it's gold, silver, or Bitcoin, they all have various aspects of uh, sound money principles. The big question just becomes, you know, gold has, let's say 5,000 years of a track record, Bitcoin has 11 years. So of course there's going to be a hesitancy when it comes to something like Bitcoin. My kind of pitch to people is look, the one thing that um, has a, uh, an advantage, I think, from Bitcoin, or, or the most important advantage, is there's full transparency and the verifiability of Bitcoin. So you know exactly how much exists, exactly how much is being produced every day, and kind of the supply side of the supply and demand equation is known with 100% certainty. And so it's just a matter of uh, generational divide, right? Older folks usually aren't used to kind of touching all the digital technologies. Younger people are. Um, and, and so you kind of pick your asset, but they both have sound money principles. Uh, and I actually think both of them will do well coming out of, uh, out of this economic crisis. I think most people know that. They just don't know what to do. And they don't know why you guys, younger guys, are so enthusiastic on crypto. I mean, even Max Kaiser is not as young as you guys what he calls himself the reincarnation of Satoshi. The, the thing that really, really woke me up was this having. Now the reason having is important is because at the same time, let's get this, this is why I converted over to Bitcoin. This is my reason and it was Anthony that cleared it up for me. Is that at the same time the Fed is printing trillions of dollars, Bitcoin is tightening. So Bitcoin's getting harder and the dollar's getting softer. If you take quantitative easing, right, that is literally uh, the Fed printing money and flooding the market with more dollars, right? It, it creates uh, a, a higher degree or a higher number of circulating supply of dollars. So that's quantitative easing. Now, the opposite of that quantitative hardening or quantitative tightening would be them actually taking dollars out of circulation, right? And yeah. so what ends up happening in Bitcoin is something that looks like quantitative hardening. So there's 21 million Bitcoin that were, have ever been created. Every 10 minutes in the beginning, 50 of them were distributed into the circulating supply. That programmatically was cut in half four years later. So after four years of 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes, it got cut to 25. It then went for four more years. It then got cut to 12 and a half. And just earlier this month in May, it went from 12 and a half to 6.25. So the way to think about this is uh, previously, um, earlier this year, there was 18 Bitcoin a day that was getting created and entered into the uh, circulating supply. Now there's only 900. So if you think about the opposite of quantitative easing is quantitative hardening, literally you're getting an artificially capped supply that is becoming harder and harder to get 
on a daily basis. And so as long as demand stays the same or goes up for that asset, the US dollar value should appreciate. And so the key piece to this, again, why are young people gravitating towards this asset is one, it's programmatic, right? Compare that to the, the Fed. People are, are betting trillions of dollars in the market on are they gonna print more, or are they not? What's the interest rate decision gonna be, right? All that kind of stuff. With Bitcoin, we know with 100% certainty what's gonna happen. And then the second piece is that it's programmatic, right? So nobody can go in and manipulate it. The Fed is centralized banking. So central is also communist, you know, you know, command and control of a central government. That's communism. Whereas what Bitcoin, gold and silver are, they're, they're, they're not controlled by anybody. So one of the reasons back in 72 when I started buying gold was because the Fed couldn't mess with it. They do mess with it to some degree, but they can't print a lot of it. You know, and that's what I don't like about saving dollars. There's 12 people making the decision for a minimum of 330 million people's money, right? That just kind of doesn't sit well with younger people. And so when you look at something like Bitcoin, there's computer code that was written. That computer code can only be changed if more than 50% of the people on the network agree to change it. Look, the, the whole pitch I think behind Bitcoin is you have to understand how money works, right? And the US financial system is predicated on 50% or more of people not understanding how money works. If you understand how it works, you know that the dollar is going to get less valuable over time. Bitcoin has the exact opposite monetary policy and should get more valuable over time. So once you understand that, it's pretty simple.